everybody, good morning and welcome to General Thinking right here on the streets of Barangaroo. This is the very first in a really amazing series of lively talks and discussions and, and conversations and debates. I'm going to set the scene a little bit, talk about the role of the evolving city. Um, residents' feeling of life satisfaction is greatly increased the closer they have uh, to urban green space and great parks. This is my street, this is Redfern, this is the lane uh, behind my house here. And our little community has taken what really was just a car-centric laneway, um, roller doors to the street, pretty dead, and turned it into something which is quite magical. The Goods Line, a project which has just been completed, not only does it create connection, it also creates a whole series of inclusive spaces, places for community, exercise areas. You probably will all know this project as well, uh, in the south of the city, One Central Park. It really is the benchmark in terms of living architecture. If you lined up the 2,700 planter boxes which are on the facade there, they'll stretch from Central Park to the airport. It's seven kilometres of planters. Where we are today embodies a whole range of sustainability initiatives. Buildings are starting to be greened here on the waterfront. Great opportunity to treat streets as places for urban forests. And finally, biodiversity. Why can't we have a fantastic environment for birds, for bees, uh, for bugs in our cities to get closer and have direct proximity to nature? This is possible uh, on our rooftops, but particularly in our streets. And so hopefully I've set a little scene for the opportunities for that to happen, and I think you're about to see uh, some projects where this has been realised. Uh, what happened to me? How do you go from being a news anchor to an urban farmer? Um, it was quite an unusual journey, I suppose. So I was standing on my balcony on the 13th floor of my apartment in Potts Point, and 20 square metres is all, all it is, and I said, well, this is all the space I have, you know. Um, I want to grow my food, I want to be more connected to the environment, but this is just tiles and... Um, and glass and concrete. What if I transformed this space? Everything you can grow on the ground I grew on a balcony and I've used all the vertical spaces to increase my productivity. So vertical walls and hanging basket systems as well. So this is the, the new extension that the Wayside built. So David got in touch with me and said, would you be interested in running the garden classes? And I said, of course. Um, really admire what the Wayside does. And um, over that first year we grew something like, I don't know, it was pretty crazy, six, seven hundred kilos of produce that um, now are used um, in the cafe at the wayside and of course it becomes a really important teaching area for our homeless visitors to learn about not only growing but um, how to cook um, nutritious meals which is a really big problem nutrition for people who are homeless. I just want to show you where this can actually go. I've been talking about smaller spaces in the city but this is the Brooklyn Grange Farm in New York, two and a half acres in size. This is how big we can go using some of these wasted rooftop spaces rather than seeing lawn which is still great because that's a green roof. Um, I would love to see vegetables on top of Parliament House. Um, when I ever see lawn or, or empty spaces I think why couldn't we be growing veggies there? As someone said in one of my talks recently, well, there's enough manure under there to, to really fertilise them. So uh, a bit of food for thought. Thank you very much. I want to talk to you guys really about your personal relationship with this uh, uh, biophilia or this, uh, as Joel Salatin uh, would call it, the ecological umbilical, which connects you back to your evolution. Every breath that you take, on average, has about 20 to 30,000 organisms in it. This little guy here, this one is uh, Microbacterium vasi. This little guy, uh, we found, actually alleviates pain and nausea, and people who have been injected with it, uh, report who have lung cancer, report a better quality of life. It also happens that um, there's been a bunch of tests done on this one bacteria lately that when it's injected into mice, it activates a set of uh, serotonin-releasing neurons in the brain, the exact same neurons that are activated when you take Prozac. Now, where do you think you might find massive concentrations of this microorganism? In soil. <laughs> Have a good sniff of it, because it'll make your whole day feel a hell of a lot better. If you aren't growing something, just get a pot, fill it with... Fill it with some herbs. There's just some parsley growing in that one. If it goes to flower, it provides some more habitat for those predatory insects. The soil in that pot is providing you with that hit of microbacterial goodness, and it allows you to start to reconnect with that natural world, that world that produces our food, so that we can then really appreciate 
the benefits that it can bring to our own lives, to our communities, and to our cities. Thank you very much to all of you for coming to the very first in this amazing series. It's going to be fantastic. I promise you, uh, general thinking here on the streets of Barangaroo. Um, this is the first one, as I said, it will continue on. There'll be another one in late November and then it will go on. And then there's a really hot summer program. If you look at the website, Streets of Barangaroo, you'll, you'll find some details uh, there too. Once again, my name's Fenella Kernerbone. Thank you so much. Have a good day.